Hey, hello everybody. This is Santa Jerry from Santa Switch Adapted Toys. Today, we're going to modify and add some cabling to a Fisher Price Penguin. This is very similar to, I mean, this has two buttons on it, similar to the sloth. So it's probably going to be similar to that, but let's find out where the connections are inside. For video purposes, I've already removed the screws so that we can access the base. In fact, this one's already been adapted. I don't have one that's uh, ready to be adapted. They're already done, but we can certainly show you how it's how I did mine. So this gets pulled out. Save these. Make sure you've got them ready to put back in. Sometimes on these toys, that button there falls out. Don't lose it. Make sure you keep that button, because if you don't, it will not activate with the factory switch anymore, okay? So keep track of those. So on this board, or on this toy, I have put two holes in the back. Let's see, get a little. Two holes in the back for the cabling to come through, so we have a left and a right. I put my cables through, tie a knot in it. I've discussed this in other videos. The reason I use knots is because the zip ties, which is usually common, seem to slip. These will never slip and therefore it will always act as a good strain relief. So on this toy, this is going to be a little awkward with the camera, but... So on this toy, the activation from the factory is accomplished by that button that I'm going to pull it out of there so you can see what it is. This button presses on this spot here or there's another one on this spot here and these are the switches. Now there's ways you can solder to that if you want to but if you try to do that the success is sometimes limited but it also then means that you cannot use the factory switch. This factory button, you might as well throw it away because it will never again make contact with that. So on all of my toys, I try to make sure that the factory switches are functional as well as the adaptive switch retains complete use of the toy. So I trace these out. I follow these two wires out. And these two wires on this switch go over to the circuit board and are attached back here. On the back side of the circuit board there's a list of contacts, or a row rather. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let me count those again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, there we are. The left, so from the left side, numbers four and five act as common and contact for this switch. So rather than soldering it to a circuit board, why don't we just solder it to an existing solder connection? It'd be a lot easier. At least for me it is. On the right button, when you track these out to see where they went, they go to number seven no, wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five. Number six and number seven on this uh, line of posts. So the same thing applies. Why solder to here and defeat the factory switch when we can solder to something that is very easy to do, and that's those content points there. So that's what I did. I brought the wiring in and I soldered it to terminals. I soldered the left side to terminals 4 and 5, and I soldered the right side to terminals 6 and 7, and those are what goes out. The cables that I make up are stereo cables. You can see here I've got three color wiring coming out of that. Um, something I don't know. Put behind there, there's it's red, yellow, and white. And two of those were combined to make one side of it to turn it into a mono cable. The other one is singular, and it makes the other side. There, I include a link in the video as to how to identify and turn a stereo cable to a mono cable so that you can use them on switch adapted toys. 
so there it is I mean this is a, a pretty straightforward one again by using these connection points instead of these you save yourself a lot of time a lot of trouble and you retain the complete functionality of the toy so to put it back together normally you just swing that up except hey we're missing some parts make sure that those pads are in there these only go into this toy one way if I tried to put the red one over here it starts to fit but it doesn't go in it's slightly different shape so we've got those back together holding the toy this direction and secure it back up I'm going to put a screw in here so that I don't lose that connection I don't lose my alignment on stuff. Let's put two of them in. That way it won't fall off. Fall out. Okay. So I've got two switches that I use underneath my desk here for test purposes. Let's turn this toy on. Okay, music by using the factory button and ABC. Oh. Beaver started talking. Okay, so I'm using the uh, adaptive buttons up underneath the table here to turn on or to activate it. On this toy, every time you punch a button, you interrupt the program and it starts over. So it's real easy and real quick to be able to confirm your buttons work. Your uh, your soldering job works. So there it is. That's how I adapt the penguin. So thank you folks for watching. Uh, this is Santa Jerry from Santa Jerry's Swift Adapted Toys. Look forward to making some other videos for you. If you have a particular request, please let me know, and I'll see what I can do. You have a wonderful day. Bye.